Welcome to MTBS TV. I'm Neil Schneider. Last week we started our series to talk about the history of stereoscopic 3D gaming. Very interesting, very exciting history. So let me quickly recap. Metabyte developed the first stereoscopic 3D drivers and launched Wicked 3D in December 1998. This was a very innovative solution because it allowed gamers to take almost any game off the shelf and start playing in stereoscopic 3D right away. There was no need for game developers to customize their games or natively program their games for stereoscopic 3D. NVIDIA later acquired Metabyte's asset. Their stereoscopic 3D team moved over to NVIDIA. And in June 2001, NVIDIA released their first stereoscopic 3D drivers. What made these drivers unique was they supported everyone. All the LCD shutter glasses, head-mounted displays, 3D monitors, projectors, you name it, they were supported by NVIDIA for years to come. In 2006, IZ3D launched their first 17-inch 3D monitor. Now, this was at a time where CRT monitors, the most popular 3D solution or display for LCD shutter glasses, was growing extinct. So this is one of the first options that gamers had to play in stereoscopic 3D without having to use a bulky CRT monitor. Instead, it was a dual-panel LCD solution. In March of 2007, Meant to be Seen was launched, mtbs3d.com. Yay! Okay, so now we continue. In June 2007, IZ3D announced competing stereoscopic 3D drivers. Uh, now, the reason these drivers were, were very important at the time is this was the first instance where AMD as well as NVIDIA graphics cards were equally supported. So before the industry was strictly NVIDIA graphics cards, now it was AMD or ATI and NVIDIA graphics cards being equally supported. And in November of that year, IZ3D launched their 22-inch IZ3D monitor. Of course, ATI and NVIDIA graphics card support was there. Now, September of 2007, a little bit earlier, Dynamic Digital Depth released their first DirectX 9 stereoscopic 3D drivers. So clearly, 2007 was a very important year for stereoscopic 3D gaming. Now, let's talk about a company called Zalman. Zalman does many things, but what they're most famous for are hardware cooling products. The idea is that when hardcore gamers buy equipment, like graphics cards or CPUs, they like to get more performance out of them than, than they were designed for. The problem is when you overclock or you drive the hardware faster than it's supposed to be going, it grows hot and it gets prone to error. So what Zalman does is they sell cooling products so gamers can get more performance than originally designed. Now, in March of 2007, Zalman announced plans that they were expanding their markets. They were going into the display market as well. And at CBIT 2007, they revealed their Trimon 3D monitors. Different technology from IC3D, but they were still polarized and they were still LCD, LCD panel based. So it wasn't a bulky CRT monitor solution. So uh, very well received. Now, uh, in order to make these 3D monitors work, they needed software support, so they struck a relationship with NVIDIA to, to have drivers created for them so that gamers could enjoy stereoscopic 3D games on the Zalman monitors. And NVIDIA would, rele would reveal these updated drivers at, at CES 2008, or in January of 2008. Now, I had the opportunity of meeting uh, David Cook, the head of stereo development at NVIDIA in person, and, and sure enough, they would support DirectX 9, and the new and new DirectX 10, which was a big deal in stereoscopic 3D gaming. It hadn't been done before. Still hasn't, by the way, with the exception of the NVIDIA drivers. They would offer improved post-processing support. As you recall, in the last segment, NVIDIA had a lot of problems with HDR, Bloom, and Glow. So these new drivers would be you know, more compatible with these, with these special effects. SLI wasn't ready yet, but it was expected. And the idea is that you know, 3D gamers could, could have more than one NVIDIA graphics card working cooperatively to make the games play faster, even in stereoscopic 3D, which was a first at the time. They were Vista only. This was very controversial because the majority of gamers were still playing on Windows XP. We don't, you know, a lot of people were scratching their heads as to why uh, NVIDIA went with Vista only instead of supporting XP as well. We'll never know. But nonetheless, it was, they were Vista only drivers. Now, there was one more controversial point, and I'll go into that momentarily. Now, let's recap what the circumstances were. We don't really know what was happening behind closed doors at NVIDIA or what they were really thinking, but in 2007, stereoscopic 3D gaming really ha hadn't taken off yet. 
And to date, NVIDIA supported the entire industry, and yet no money was coming in outside of the customers upgrading their graphics cards every so often. So in 2007, NVIDIA put proposals out to see if they could get their drivers licensed through additional display manufacturers. And unfortunately, no agreements or you know, none of the agreements came to fruition, with the exception of Zalman. And what happened was Zalman sponsored NVIDIA to create updated stereoscopic 3D drivers for their solution. The caveat is that the drivers, at least for the interim, would be exclusive to the Zalman monitors and not work with the other solutions in the market. So as expected, all support was dropped for everything, all the shutter glasses, head-mounted displays, other 3D monitors, projectors, e e everything in use up until that point, all their support was dropped when it came to stereoscopic 3D gaming. What was the consumer response? Pure pandemonium. The stereoscopic 3D gamers were very vocal, very upset. I, I, in my opinion, 2008, after this was announced, really marked the darkest year for NVIDIA when it came to stereoscopic 3D gaming. I know for myself, I was, you know, I was waiting for my airplane at Las Vegas to, to head home after CES, and reading through the forums, the mem MTBS members were actually very upset with me. They were angry at me because they thought it was my responsibility to somehow force or convince NVIDIA to maintain support for all the different 3D solutions. In the NVIDIA forums, it was even worse. Customers who, you know, people would express an interest in the Zalman 3D monitors, but then they would immediately be discouraged by, by people saying, oh, you can't trust NVIDIA, they could drop support at any moment, even though they had nearly 10 years of support for, for their own solutions. But nonetheless, the, the forums were filled with grievances left, right, and center. Uh, that said, in March, on March 10, 2008, NVIDIA released their, their first stereoscopic 3D beta, and as expected, it only supported the Zalman uh, 3D solution. And, you know, everyone was upset, and justifiably so, because the customers and the display manufacturers really had no one to turn to. The IZ3D drivers were limited to IZ3D monitors. DDD, granted, they supported multiple solutions, but they were sold on a, on a per-game basis. They were, you know, a license per game model, which wasn't popular at the time. Eventually, in December 2008, IZ3D's response was the 1.09 drivers, which supported interlaced monitors, included, including Zalman, dual output, which supported some head-mounted displays and dual projectors, and DLP checkerboard, which was very popular among 3D HDTVs. Unfortunately, shutter glasses could not be supported because the, the required synchronization was only possible via NVIDIA or ATI, and AMD wasn't involved in the market at the time. Now, it's, NVIDIA's position was understandable. I mean, they, they obviously they took a gamble, but it was an understandable gamble. They were not making money, and they needed a justification for the stereoscopic 3D division. Um, and frankly, if it wasn't for, for Zalman stepping in, in my opinion, I think stere you know, NVIDIA could have completely pulled out of stereoscopic 3D gaming altogether, only to re reappear much later. Now, some positive things. This move widened uh, driver support for to include AMD as well as NVIDIA graphics cards, and it created a justification for the likes of IZ3D and DDD. But sadly, between the customers who were justifiably upset and, and the media that didn't quite understand how to use the Zalman 3D product, the Trimon 3D monitors wouldn't be as successful as they could have been. They, they just weren't they just weren't the success that, that uh, the industry was hoping for. And so now uh, with 2020 hindsight, in my opinion, had NVIDIA maintained support for the CRT monitors, uh, it would have been very different because CRT users were a minority, they're even more so now, and they would have been positive about 3D. And this would have captured the interest of traditional 2D gamers to actually buy the more modern Zoman solution. Well, live and learn. Next week, NVIDIA's rebirth in stereoscopic 3D gaming. See you then.